with Rex Tags and Confections and I had posted a picture um, with a card for our niece and her new son that will be here this week and was asked about how I did the background so I want to show you that so since Andrew's off had just left for work and it's time for me to start my night here at home I'm going to start it with you guys and showing you how I did this little greeting card very very simple Sorry for the glare there, holy cow. Um, it's just a very simple. But I think for this one, this time I'm going to do pink instead of blue. Um, just for some variation. Even though our baby girl, our niece, was born Saturday evening at 11.54 p.m. So, but we had already done a card for her. And I wanted to do something different for Jade, so... We are starting with embossing folder. Um, I'm not sure where you can get this now. We had purchased this from Created Home with G um, when he still, Gareth still had his store. And this is like the only baby thing that we actually have. And Andrew ran a bunch through for me um, earlier this afternoon because, well, I have a tendency to mess more than one thing up at a time. So, I always have backups. Alright, so, let me slide this in. I'm going to use a few different inks. I think I may go with pinks and purples on this one. I pulled out the Sweet Shop Nouveau watercolor pencils. I don't know if I'll use them on this one or not, but I figured they had a pink in it. I may as well just pull it out. Um... These are both worn lipstick distress inks. One's an oxide, one's the regular ink. Um, the only other thing I think I had used my lovely nighttime herbal tea out of the way here are Prismacolors. And I think we'll be needing this one because I think all the pinks are in this one. I finally. Um, had in actually the pinks and purples are in I finally asked Andrew to pull out my well not my but he used them too but not as often as I do so but um To actually open the box up, the, they, I mean, the big set, the big, big set comes in a box with a magnetic lid, and so I asked him if we could just go ahead and open them all up, and then actually have them out where I can see them and use them more, because when they're put on the shelf and put away it's like oh my gosh I don't feel like dealing with the hassle of getting them out and pulling them out and then I got to find somewhere to put this big huge two foot long box and then separate the six pans out that are inside it and I'm like, mm. so I love these pencils absolutely love them all right there's some pinks and purples let's start with those uh, I'm gonna grab this gray this is a gray green light and I found when I did the blue one that that kind of made some things pop a little bit more so I'm going to pull it out with this one too and see if it does the same okay, I'm get my crap paper even had to pull out my make myself a little itty bitty cup for my little itty bitty baby pencils. These are from my first set of pencils that Andrew had purchased for us. So, yeah, I like, I really like these pencils. But enough of that. Alright, so we need our embossed panel. Move this again so I don't knock it over. Every night, herbal tea. 
can't go without it. I can't, but I'm not a pleasant person with it without it. So. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, now this is still pink from. And it's not coming off, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. If you're curious what this shape is, it's the Nouveau Blender. It also came with one of their brushes, and that's what I used in the little book. And I actually kind of liked it because it left everything really nice and light and airy. I didn't get too heavy-handed. I don't think I'll be using that on here, but it's handy off to the side here if I need it. So for light pinks, I pulled out a Versa Magic, which this kind of comes up like a chalk finish, and then the Memento to cut down on that glare. Bad side of recording at night, like shadows and glare, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with this Versa Magic and see what we get. I'm just going to do some simple color blending. Crud, sorry. Turn that off. I usually have it off, and for once I actually had it on. Alright. I just want something to go from light to dark. And this is exactly what I did on the blue one, only I used the blue Versa Magic, which was Sea Breeze, and Sky Blue in the Memento, and Broken China on the bottom for the darkest color. But I started out with the same white panel, and this is just 110 pound white cardstock. Versa Magic. Just a soft, beautiful color, I think, for baby pink. Honestly, not sure how much different this is. Oh, I got glitter on this one. Imagine that. Let's see what difference we get here, if any. We do not have a lot of pink. I was looking at the shelf when I had Andrew uh, pull me some down, and lipstick red is about as pink as we have, which I think is what I'm going to have to go in with here. It's this memento is just a little too matchy matchy. I'm going to start with the oxide, and no, I don't change the foam out. If I'm working with all pink, I use the same one. If I stick with all purple, I stick with the same one. I don't change one out per color. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Just a nice subtle change. If I had a darker pink, I'd probably go with that, but I'm going to attempt to feed, or, yeah, feed this into purple. Fade this into purple. Move these little guys out of the way. And do I have, uh, I got a purple finger blender. You stay up there. Oh, for Pete's sake. 
that's that's what holds the camera up that you guys can't see right now it's just kind of teetering I'm living dangerously and hoping the camera don't fall over because I can't climb behind the desk to put it on there the way it's supposed to let's grab a clean one for the purple because I do not have a purple one handy Lavender. Let's see what we get first. Try to get that loaded up. And this is exactly why I don't like changing pads because when you have to start them out new. It's like, oh my gosh, it takes forever to get ink on here to blend. And to get a nice smooth blend. Like once you have ink on there, then you get these beautiful blends that just are seamless. But yeah, I know I'm sticking my fingers on there, but hopefully it's dry enough. I'm not going to make a royal mess. I live dangerously. we go sorry guys okay sorry about that <laughs> guess the uh, vibration of me rubbing the ink on the paper kind of made the camera go wonky so we're just about done with this part so hopefully it won't fall again. But thank heavens it didn't go crash. It seen it coming and I was able to snag it with my one hand. I'm kind of having leaving an organic edge here. I'm not obviously did not tape it off. I don't want specific boundaries. It's just I want it to blend one into the next. And as that dries, it'll um, even out as well. Let me put these away here real quick and get this out of my way. And these little plastic boxes, I think they came from. Okay, listen here, camera. We are not having this tonight. Nope, nope, nope. second guys okay let's try this again so anyhow these are just those plastic containers from Harbor Freight and they work really nice for these little dew drops so if anybody has a Harbor Freight near them pretty handy all right so, and now in comes our pencils I'm going to pull this pink one out of here. I don't know if I'll actually use it or not, but... Let's see if I can bring you guys down a little closer and... There. Let's 
let's see, hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. All right, now, if anybody has trouble sharpening Prismacolors, if you have any Prismacolors, this pencil sharpener has been the best one that we've found yet. We actually purchased the actual Prismacolor, my, don't mind the dust, um, pencil sharpener, thinking that it would work for them. And it did. It, it worked okay. But this Faber that does your color grip that has the wonky, grippy sides on and does fatter pencils and thinner pencils. This is an absolute dream. And to another tip to sharpening them, turn... Oh, that one broke. I don't know how long this has been. These short ones. Let me empty this real quick, guys. Oh, gosh, that's why. That's why we have this. Okay. So, you shut up! Shush! Sorry, guys, our neighbors are out there carrying on like a bunch of fools, and the dogs don't like it. Okay, so to turn your, to sharpen a prism color so you're not putting so much stress on the soft lead inside, hold your pencil and turn the sharpener. It helps alleviate some of that stress that you're putting on that lead because that lead in those are very, very soft. And also try not to bang them around. If you do, um, I found by putting them in the microwave for f f just a few seconds and then letting them cool um, will kind of help meld that lead back together again. I'm sorry y'all heard me use such violent language with the dogs, but I, it's frustrating when they bark like that and neighbors have no business yelling around this late at night either. But, okay, so since I'm doing pinks and purples, um, I'm going to start with the bottom here in the purple. I'm going to pull out this color and I'm just going to go in these little I think the little lines here. And you could do this with any sort of um, embossing folder. I'm going to hit those embossed lines a little bit, bring them out, I honestly didn't know if this was going to work because I've never layered any of my pencils over top of um, let's see where else can we use that, let's try that over on this cupcake I've never done this technique where I've layered the colored pencils over top of the blended ink. So I was like, I wonder what kind of results I'll get. Well, I actually like the results I got, so. And when I use one color while I have it in my hand, I try to go hit a few other places with it as well. And as I use them, I kind of turn mine different directions. That's just my one of my idiosyncrasies with coloring. And that actually started with um, when I had to work with them in a box because they were all facing one way. So the ones I use, like if they were facing this way in the box, when I would use them, I would turn them this way or tilt them up over the edge. So I knew that that was a color I used. I'm just going to put a darker shade here on the edges and I'm just making tiny little circles now, let's see let's see what this color will do and this is just kind of like trial and error I mean just grab some colors that are close to what your ink is and go from there. I mean if it doesn't show up well then just 
color over it. And I think that's one of the reasons I like Prisma so much is that they do, as long as you have a light hand and build your color up gradually, you um, you can layer them very, very easily. Oh crud, I forgot to color that part. Speaking of layering, all right, now let's try this gray for the middle of this little onesie here and see what we get. There's one little onesie. And I'm going to do the baby carriage here with you. Let's do the baby carriage in the pink. Start with this bright pink and see what we get. This is a very, and this is neon pink. I think there was four neon colors in this set. And on their own, I would not use neon colors. However, uh, to build on top of these, they come out so, so pretty. They just add a little bit of vibrance to whatever you're working on. I think I am going to dig through my pencils though and find a darker, a deeper shade of pink. I only have light on this one side of my desk, so I have to strain to see what I'm doing. This is my mulberry. That'll work. That's a pinky purple color. What I'm looking for. There's one in here called Process Red. Is this it? Yes. No, I don't want brown. Thank you. Yeah, this Process Red is. Uh, and this is why this pencil frustrates me. Every so often you have one that just doesn't cooperate. I called Prismacolor about it once and they wanted me to ship the whole box back. And this was the big box. I'm like, no, I am not paying shipping on a freaking huge box of pencils. You just need to fix your problem. But with that neon underneath there, it just brightens it up a tiny little bit. Straight up pink for a mid tone and see what we get. And when I'm doing any kind of coloring like this, I go over what I already have down. I mean, it's one thing with coloring, everybody kind of does their own thing. Some work dark to light, some work light to dark. I'm working little, like little tiny strokes, which depending on what I'm coloring, I do work in strokes and something like this though, I'm going to work in 
tiny little circle. darker. Oh, of course, make this, get this mulberry down in here and up around those wheels since it's going to be a little darker there. No, I'm not going for perfect shading on this because it's a card piece and somebody's surely not going to take the time to critique, oh my gosh, look at this, that's not shaded properly, the light's not coming from that direction, da -da. no. You can hear it picking up the texture of the the buggy. And I'm going to put this darker color in the recess of the buggy here as well. Mm -hmm. I actually had a process read out. Pulled it out and didn't even realize I pulled it out. Take this pink rose. Let's throw that in there and blend these all out together and see what we get. And now I'm pushing a little bit harder because I do want those colors to blend together not just layer on top of each other. of the embossing. And sometimes I just keep the pencil flat so that it just hits that raised ridge. Like the handle here just to give it a little color for differentiation from the background, that's all. And we need some white lace here on the edges. Just every little girl needs some white lace in their life. Give the wheels a little something down here. colors here in the middle where it starts to blend, I'm going to mix the pink and the purple pencils together. So, okay. I'm going to let that go as that buggy. And I'm going to pause here and I'm going to color all the other images the exact same way. Just layering these few pencils here I have out together. And um, I will catch you back. Okay guys, so the coloring is all done and hopefully we can get through this without the camera falling over again. So I've pulled out a couple of different new drops, um, Ebony Black and Morning Dew, I think is what this one is. Yes, Morning Dew. Clear Shimmer and Flamingo Pink Shimmer. I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but just in case. They have just a plain card base. These are pre-made card bases that we picked up so when Andrew's not here to cut stuff for me I have them handy 
But you guys are all waiting for. I'm trying not to lose that little heart that's giving me so much trouble. Okay, so. There's our panel. And I just, as um, I showed you these pieces, um, I went through and colored all the other ones the same. So now our panel's ready to adhere. I have a congratulations that I've already cut for the inside. I'll lay that on here. And to do that, it's just a congratulations die. And I took the same pencils that I was coloring with and smeared them out on the paper and then die cut from that so that that all matches. So that's how I got that piece. Of course, I'm trying to throw the die away. Good night. Better what I be, better be saying is good night. Now this set also came with this cute little stork. And I wanted to add some color to him so he wasn't just plain white. And again, I did the same thing. I took, I um, laid the stork down. Traced around this in pencil. That way I knew my lines were going to be outside the cutting area. And then I just roughly colored him in. So we can get rid of that. Keep his little smile. I don't know if I want it or not. But it punched out a little heart, and I have that laying off to the side here. I always stamp the back of our cards. Try to remember to do that before I get any too far into it. So, this congratulations, I'm just going to put in the middle here for the sentiment. Sided adhesive sheets, and I could just cut these out of that and peel it off instead of having to sit here and dab on glue. Although it's probably quicker to dab on glue than to try to fight with getting the backing off of some of that paper. Alright, so. So, and I found one off. Just dab some of this one here. I don't think about doing these things till after they're already in, and then it's like, oh well. Make my life a little more difficult. What's a challenge? Okay. So there's that. There's our simple little sentiment on the inside. Give that a quick second. <clears throat> I've been debating whether to pop this panel up or not. Stork. I want him down on the bottom. I think I actually kind of like him right in the middle, honestly. And I think I'm gonna do this flat. We'll do something with the stork. I know I'm gonna give him some eyeballs. That's why I pulled the Black Nouveau drops out.
and then you could very easily go over any of these pieces you'd want with the with any kind of shimmer or shine or glossy accents glossy accent the bottles and fill them in make them look like actual bottles on there I think I am going to add some glitter to the little bag a little shine whoa boy my pen is juicy tonight It's going to take a quick second to dry. And on my poor cutting plate is the tiniest little heart that came out of the bag. Boy, that was fun trying to put foam on the back of that little bugger to pop it up. that heat gun out to oops I just got it up on his well we'll give him a little shine too just dab some of that on there I did kind of go over him with a little bit of French gray pencil so he wasn't stark white. I gave him a little bit of color. Okay. Now. I really don't like that without the mouth in there. It just doesn't look right to me. He had this tiny little teen. Well, there it is tiniest little mouth and I don't know if I can get it put back in there or not we'll see we'll see how much hassle it's worth I do have a special day sticker left here from yesterday. Hmm. Nope, you know what? I'm going to leave it simple and let that... Um, Bossing for to do the speaking. I think I'm going to add some tiny little gems into the centers of the heart or the flowers that are on the onesies since I'm going to keep this front really simple. I'm hoping maybe I can drop that smile of his back in and glue it down. Kind of make him look like he's flying up and away here. Boogers is that tiny. I just think it needs to be put back in. I don't like his big gaping mouth there. There we go. That looks better in my opinion. Let's 
Let's add some embellishments. Purple down there, so jump. So we have one here and one up here. Well, that wasn't nothing but a bubble of air. There we go. Purple and down you. Blue, I don't need to. Pack you. Try to get this doggone little heart in there. I'd rather you not be able to see the foam, but. some of this stuff sometimes. I really don't. seems like the more I try to go for a simple card, the more fiddly I get. Yeah, good enough. Just drop some glue because I know that's sticky. Can't be very good after the way I fumbled with it. Get over. I kind of want to give him black eyes, but that's going to be too stark. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to think about his eyes here for a minute. Oh, great, there's my hair falling out again. Not that y'all cared to know that, but. Just a few clear little dr oh boogers that one blew up it just just not all over my card guys so there we go I'm gonna figure out something to do with the eyes here I may just leave them alone yeah, I'm not sure but there's some simple color blending or ink blending and with the addition of some Prismacolor pencil or any color pencils of your choice and just a simple little congratulations card so hopefully you could get something from that and if there's something that you would like to see how Andrew or I do, please don't hesitate to leave in the comments and ask. So we will see you again soon. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye-bye.